Hi, today we're going to talk about Zengo. What makes it such a secure self-custodial wallet with no seed phrase vulnerability? Let's jump in. And there are really three issues that we're going to focus on today. The first is secure storage. How do you secure your assets, not just for today or tomorrow, but for the decades ahead? The second is secure recovery. If your phone gets lost or stolen, how can you ensure that it's easy for you to recover your assets, but it's very difficult for someone who's not you to steal them from you? And then lastly, transactional security is an important part of this process. On a daily basis, when you're buying or selling crypto assets, NFTs, engaging in DeFi and Web3, how can you ensure that what you're actually approving inside your wallet is going to do what you expect it to do? And it's not going to drain your wallet. So let's now discuss how Zengo approaches these three pillars. In terms of secure storage, Zengo has no seed phrase vulnerability, right? Those 12 to 24 words that traditional wallets have. Instead, we use something called MPC, which stands for multi-party computation. And because there's no single point of failure in the Zengo ecosystem, it's much more difficult for someone to get access to your wallet and to steal your assets. Because Zengo has no seed phrase, we use a different process to allow you to recover your assets. We have a three-factor authentication process, which we'll focus on in a little bit so you can understand how that works. And then in terms of, transa in tr in terms of transactional security, Zengo has a built-in Web3 firewall that automatically reviews every transaction before you approve it to ensure that what you're actually approving is what you mean to approve. So let's jump in by focusing first on what MPC is, how it works, and why it's so much more secure than a traditional crypto wallet, even a hardware wallet. And we're going to start by asking you a question. I'd like you to guess, over the last 10 years, how much Bitcoin do you think has been lost or stolen because of seed phrase mismanagement? A million dollars, a hundred million dollars, maybe more? Well, actually, and this is a pretty conservative uh, number, over a hundred billion dollars worth of Bitcoin alone has been lost or stolen. And these are by the early adopters, the OGs, the folks who understand self-custody, understand the trade-offs within those ecosystems and are supposed to be good at securing their assets for a long period of time. This $100 billion number is actually quite conservative. It doesn't include the first million Bitcoin, known as Satoshi's Bitcoin, and it assumes that Bitcoin is at a $40,000 per Bitcoin valuation, which is not a lot in the long-term scheme of things. So, so why has so much been lost already? Well, it's because seed phrases are a vulnerability, right? They represent a single point of failure in this ecosystem. And in a traditional wallet, whether it's a software wallet or a hardware wallet, it doesn't matter at the end of the day how secure that wallet is if you can't secure this seed phrase. People say to keep it somewhere safe, but what does that even mean? We see on a daily basis, lots of scams pop up all over the ecosystem and while you might know that you shouldn't put your seed phrase anywhere, especially online, people don't know that. So we continue to see these scams because unfortunately they're working. This is a system that is not secure by default. This was a very famous one that popped up probably about six months ago where someone clearly has a hardware device. They thought that they were able to secure their crypto assets on it, and yet they held their seed phrase in their pocket. And when they were picked up, by a law enforcement officer who looked through their items, they found the seed phrase. And I'll bet you that you know, those assets are no longer in that wallet. Now, let's look at how a traditional wallet with a seed phrase works, and then we'll compare that to MPC and Zengo's approach. With a traditional wallet, and this is a very simplified version of it, you have your wallet, and kind of attached to it is the seed phrase, which is used to confirm something on the blockchain. Right, so by signing with your seed phrase and your private key, it sends a message to the blockchain. The blockchain says that you are who you say you are. It accepts it into the blockchain and it moves on. But what does this mean? Because you have a seed phrase and because it's a single point of failure, it's really easy to steal. Whoever has access to the seed phrase can just take your assets. And that's also very difficult to secure because you want to keep it in as few places as possible so no one can steal it. But if you lose it yourself, if you're trying to recover your assets, you might not be able to. So let's talk for a minute about MPC and how it works. It's worth noting that it's not a new technology, and it's been around for a number of years, mostly at the institutional level, to help custody billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of assets. 
Fire Blocks has been doing this at the institutional level for many, many years. Actually, MetaMask Institutional just announced that they're going to be working with Fire Blocks uh, to secure more crypto assets using their MPC technology. Coinbase uses MPC now in its wallets as a service technology for dApps and decentralized applications. PayPal bought an MPC company a number of years ago and will clearly be incorporating it over time. MP, uh, Meta was one of the first companies to join the MPC Alliance, which was formed a number of years ago. And lastly, Zengo, right? We've been around since 2018. We actually spent a year between 2018 and 2019 focusing on the deep cryptography and the MPC behind our ecosystem before we actually shipped uh, the first version of Zengo in 2019. So Zengo at this stage is still the oldest and probably the only consumer focused MPC wallet. Security really is part of Zengo's DNA and MPC is a significant part of that, but not the only part of it. We have a Zengo X research team that does a lot of research, not just to improve our own technology, but also to find other bugs, other issues in the general crypto ecosystem. We've been invited to a number of the most prestigious security conferences. We have received bug bounties for our discoveries. We often presented Black Hat, which is known as one of the most respected security conferences in the space. And we actually host the world's largest open source MPC library, cryptographic library on our GitHub. If you're interested in learning more, feel free to go to zengo.com slash security, and you can get links to all of these items. So now let's talk about how Zengo works as an MPC wallet, and then we'll compare the two. So to start with, there's no single point of failure. Instead of a seed phrase, Zengo has two what we call secret shares. So we use a two of two system. And when you download Zengo for the first time, something happens simultaneously, both on your phone and on the remote Zengo server. What happens? Well, what each of these secret shares are generated separately but simultaneously, one on your mobile device and one on the remote server. The two are then linked cryptographically and encrypted in a way in which if somebody tried to attack them or to put some sort of man in the middle attack, it wouldn't work. The system would recognize it and it would shut down. Now, the secret share in your wallet is the controlling share. It's the one that can initiate a transaction. And then the Zengo remote share is there to, to help co-sign the transactions, basically to bounce off of anything that you're, tr that you're uh, initiating from your wallet. The two work together the way that a traditional seed phrase might work. And together, it's like unlocking whatever you're trying to do on the blockchain, and the blockchain accepts whatever you're doing. But by separating, it's not actually separating because these are generated separately from the beginning. By having no single point of failure, it makes it much more difficult for a bad actor to attack a Zengo wallet to steal your assets or to do anything nefarious because the systems are much more complicated, right? Your secret share is backed up and is secured in a very different way in how the Zengo remote server's secret share for you is backed up and secured. So what does this mean? That there's no single point of failure with the system. We'll talk about this in a little bit, but there's a recovery process that locks your Zengo wallet to you, which makes it very difficult for somebody else to steal your funds. And lastly, because these two secret shares work with each other, we can build in secondary layers of security to the system, sort of like account abstraction on steroids for those of you who have been following that technology recently. One more time, I'd like to compare the traditional wallet with the Zengo wallet. You can see that both of them engage with the blockchain. And the nice thing about MPC is it's chain agnostic, which means that it supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Tezos, Dogecoin, many, many others. And again, on the left, you see the single point of failure with a private key with a seed phrase. And on the right, you see separating it, the, the power and the security that that brings. So that was part one. That's what it means to have no seed phrase vulnerability. If you're interested in a deep dive and more technical resources, go to zengo.com security. You'll get access to a number of white papers, audits to better understand the system. And you can actually check out our MPC cryptographic library on GitHub if you'd like. Now let's talk about what it means to recover your wallet if your phone gets lost or stolen, or if you're upgrading to a new device. With a traditional wallet, you'd have a seed phrase, right? Those 12 to 24 words. And you use that seed phrase to recover your account. The problem is, 
anybody else who has access to that seed phrase can also recover your account and steal your assets from you. Because Zengo doesn't use a seed phrase, how do we support account recovery? Let's jump in. The first thing that's worth noting is why we don't use a seed phrase. It's because seed phrase wallet recovery is vulnerable. We shared this before, but anybody who has access to these 12 to 24 words can take your assets. And I shared this image before as well, right? Here's an example of somebody who thought that their assets were secure and yet somebody was able to get access to them. And I'll bet you that that uh, wallet no longer has uh, assets, crypto assets in it. And why is that the case? Well, with a traditional wallet, your seed phrase must not be stored online in order to avoid hacks. Unfortunately, a lot of people either don't know that or don't care. And by default, most of these seed phrases are, on, are online, and so they get hacked, they get fished. If you lose your seed phrase, there's no one to call for help, and whoever has access to your seed phrase has access to your assets. I'd like you to guess now, based on Zengo's system, with no seed phrase vulnerability, instead we use a three-factor authentication process, how many Zengo wallets do you think have been hacked or taken over during the recovery process, or at all, since the company was founded? We were founded in 2018. We launched the first version of the, our wallet in 2019. We have well over 800,000 users, ne nearly. I think we we're about to hit 900,000 users. The answer is zero. By having a three-factor recovery system and no single point of failure, you really do get an order of magnitude more security and the number it speaks for itself. So now let's talk about Zango's three-factor recovery system. The first thing that it has is something you access, which is your email address. You must use this email address in order to authenticate yourself the first time you download Zango and in the future if you ever want to recover Zango. However, it's worth noting it doesn't need to be a nominative email address. It doesn't need to be associated with your personal name. You can use, for example, Ari. Uh, but I could also do 1234517 at um, uh, Proton Mail. It, it doesn't matter. The second thing that you need is something you store, which is a recovery file. This is a file that's stored during the wallet creation process in your iCloud or your Google uh, Drive account. It's important to note that this is not a private key and it is not your Zengo secret share. So if somebody was able to get access to this recovery file, it's essentially useless to a bad actor, to a hacker, even if somehow somebody was able to get into your Google Drive. It means nothing to them. And the third thing is something you are, which is 3D face lock. Now 3D face lock is this really cool advanced 3D liveness scan. You do this the first time you download Zengo and it takes a 3D face map, not just of your face, but actually how it moves together. It hasn't been spoofed. It has over $600,000 bounty that has yet to be won. Um, and it's important to note that this is not KYC. We don't know who you are. We don't care who you are. This information is stored, uh, encrypted, and scrambled and kept in a separate part of the Zengo server where we can't see it. But this is what's used in order to help you recover your assets. And the beauty behind this whole system is there's no password, right? It's more secure. There are three parts to this process but there's actually nothing that you need to remember. However, it's worth noting that you do need all three parts of this in order to recover your account. At the end of the day, Zengo is a self-custodial wallet. You are responsible for your assets. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to recover your account, but if you lose any one of these three, you will not be able to recover your assets. But that's why we also support extra backups. You can add a secondary email to your Zengo account. You can add the recovery file in multiple locations, up to three. And you can add a 3D face lock backup. So you can choose a friend, family member, someone trusted as a backup for you, should you choose to do so. So that's 3FA for guaranteed recovery, right? It ensures that it's really easy for you to recover your assets, but it's very, very difficult to the degree in which zero people have successfully done it to steal somebody else's wallet through the recovery process. Next, we'll talk about Zengo's built-in Web3 firewall for transactional security. Let's talk about Zengo's built-in Web3 firewall for transactional security. What we've seen in the last few years is that Web3 has become a new attack surface for hackers. And I'd like you to guess, in 2022 alone, how much was stolen because of Web3 attacks? 
over $3 billion, pretty close to $4 billion based on the latest estimates. You've probably seen or heard of this story before, right? This is a famous actor, Seth Green, and during the last crypto bull cycle, he bought a board ape, board ape number 8398. And at the time, it was worth over 165 ETH, which at the time was worth over $260,000. And this board ape was really important because it gave him intellectual property opportunities to develop a whole ecosystem and creative world around this board ape. Unfortunately, him or someone on his team approved something in a wallet that led to this board ape being stolen and they had to buy it back. I'd like you to guess what you think this transaction would do if you were to press confirm. To be honest, it's unclear. Even to people in Web3, even to advanced users, you don't know what this would do. Now let's compare the same transaction to how it would look in the Zengo wallet. Well, with Zengo's Web3 firewall, it can see that, well, you're about to give access to all of this NFT collection to a private address. That's not a good thing. And if you were to approve this, we'd actually warn you again just to make sure that this is what you're intending to do. This is an example of Zengo's Web3 firewall, which we call ClearSign. And it's just like a stoplight. Green is for Go. We know that you're engaging with a verified DAP, decentralized application or smart contract, right? So if you're gonna buy an NFT on OpenSea, or if you're trading on Uniswap, as long as we have whitelisted this contract, we know that this smart contract will do what it says it's going to do, thanks to Zengo's in-depth research and research team that goes through the ones that surface as green in the app. The next color is yellow, where we would warn, hey, this is something that might not be okay, you wanna give it extra uh, scrutiny. And then the last color, and this is the most important, which doesn't happen often, but it does happen, is red. And when you see red inside of your Zengo wallet, it will warn you that this is highly unusual behavior. Immediate attention is required. And this is probably what Seth Green would have seen had he been using Zengo at the time. It's warning you're giving access to all board Ape Yacht Party NFTs in your wallet to a private address, which is, we know, 99.9% .9 of time, the time, a hack or a bad actor trying to steal or drain your wallet. Even if you were to approve it, we would warn you a second time and you would have to approve that anyway. At the end of the day, this is a self-custodial wallet and in Web3, you are in control and you are in charge, but sometimes it's useful to have a little extra information before you make any final decisions. And so that's the built-in Web3 firewall that's always working in the background to make sure that you are approving what you expect to. Now, when we look at all three of these together, we see the full pyramid of secure self-custody. No seed phrase vulnerability because of MPC, three FA, three factor authentication process to recover your assets if your phone gets lost or stolen, and then transactional security on a daily basis with a built-in Web3 firewall. That is the Zengo model, something that is secure by default. We hope that this was helpful for you in learning more about our security infrastructure and approach to secure self-custody. If you have any questions, go to zengo.com security to learn more. And we also have live 24 seven in-app support. So after you've downloaded Zengo, you can see in the top right of the screen, a little icon with a person in the headset, feel free to tap on that and we'll be ready to respond to you with any question you might have Usually it only takes a few minutes for us to respond. Thank you so much for your time and feel free to share any questions in the comments. We'd be happy to respond to them.